Welcome to Stitches and Sundries. This is a podcast about cross-stitch and stitchy goodness. Um, my name is Lauren. You can find me on Instagram at laurenupstitching. Um, this is episode 40, I want to say. Um, so I've been doing this a little while. And recently crossed a pretty huge uh, milestone, for me at least. Um, reached 100 subscribers, which is just amazing to me. So for all the new people who have come on recently and all the people that, especially all the people that have uh, stuck it out with me and my ramblings for this long, uh, I just appreciate you all so much for um, just uh, coming out and meeting me and chatting about your projects and, and this wonderful hobby that we all share. I have been trying to be a little better on the social medias lately. Also just life calmed down a little bit and I have the time. Um, but it's just, it's so nice to meet new people and people that love and share this hobby. We have such a good community. It's very positive. It's very, you know, it's very friendly. Um, so to, to be a part of that is really amazing to me. So I, I just can't even thank you all enough, um, for getting me here. So thank you so much. Um, I'm just baffled really. Like, oh, I started this to just hang out with a friend of mine and show and it was like a way for us to talk about our projects. And so now I've met so many wonderful people in this community. It's just amazing. Just good stuff. Um, this is, did I say it's episode 40? This is like the fourth time now I've tried to record this. So I'm a little boggled on what I have said or not said so far. Um, I recorded it, I usually record on Sunday and then um, edit and post on Wednesday. Um, but on Sunday's recording, I kept getting these weird error messages and it wasn't like stopping the video. So I was like, oh, it's probably, I thought I put it on do not disturb, but I probably forgot, like no big deal. And then looked and no, it was stopping the video. It was just cutting it into chunks. So I had like seven little chunks instead of like a full video that's, you know, usable. I thought, well, it's just easier to re-record than to try and edit that mess together because I don't know what I'm doing in a day to day editing I'm I'm winging it every time uh so I was like it'll just be easier to re-record has it been has it been I had to kick the cat out Dusty will not be showing her little face today because she was being so bad um so it's just been so I don't know what I've said so um let me think here life update let's ramble for a little bit Life updates. So last time we talked, I was literally getting ready for a cookout for a Memorial Day. Um, and it was actually really wonderful. We have not had a family get together that's that good for a long time. It really felt like get togethers back when I was a kid when it was so much easier to put 40 people in a room or in, in one space. We were outside. Um, it feels like that's so much harder now to just put that many people with disparate, you know, opinions and lives and everything and have it go well. But it did, it was beautiful, it was wonderful. Uh, one of my cousins picked up a volleyball net at a uh, yard sale, like a crappy one, like one, one for like kids. But we set it up and broke ourselves playing volleyball and it was great. I did not play volleyball because um, bre breaking ourselves is a euphem, is a, a, not a euphemism, ooh. <laughs> is a uh, strong word for some, but I would have been. But it was hilarious seeing them play. Um, and the kids got a kick out of it. Uh, and we just had good food and had a wonderful time. And it was perfect. Um, one of my cousins announced her engagement, which is super awesome. Uh, she's engaged to a wonderful guy. They've been together for a couple years now and they will be awesome together. And I already like thought about uh, a gift stitch for her like once I know her colors and a few more things like I already have a really cool um, stitch in mind to do but I will um, I'll show more about that when I like get a little more info they just got engaged they have no idea about wedding stuff yet and let me think of what else happened um, we had a little scare with the with Dusty who's my little round cat uh, I was like you're dying everything's awful turns out she just had a UTI like no big deal like put her on antibiotics for a week and she was fine um but I am I was so panicked because something was wrong um but they did tell us that she is too fat 
that she needs to go on a diet. So she's on a diet right now, which is making her also be very bad and, and unhelpful. Uh, but they're, they're not wrong. <laughs> but also, I adopted this cat from them, and I was like, you gave her to me like this. Like, she was this little round butterball when I got her. And they, they weren't taking that as, as an excuse. So I feel like this is partially them. Um, had a stitch and bitch with some awesome friends. Um, I have friends probably, I would say, between here and like an hour away, I have various friends. So we all met up in the middle in, um, in Frostburg, which is a small college town in Maryland, in Western Maryland. Super cute town, if you ever have a chance, go. We went to the Clatter Cafe. And, um, oh, I can show you part of my haul. I love stickers. And they finally got, I got Collider Cafe sticker. Uh, this, they had stickers a long time ago and then they didn't for many years or probably many months, not years. And they finally got them back. And I was like, oh, I need that. We go there all the time. Um, and we just meet up, bitch about things, show off what we've been working on. Some people knit, some people paint. Um, some people cross stitch, um, some people just hang out and drink coffee and, and, you know, tell tales. So it was really nice. Everybody was having pet problems. That's what we talked about mostly was like Dusty being sick. Devin has adopted a dog that's like on deathbed and hates her. Um, just like stuff like that. But it was good. We got to see people that weren't, haven't been there for a while. It was really good. I'm glad that we are. God damn, if COVID comes back and ruins this all for me, I will be so mad. I'm just getting re-situated in life. Um, what else? Uh, last weekend, Sarah and I took a mini vacay, just took a day off. and um, But we did take a day trip down to Charleston, West Virginia, which is about four hours from us. Charleston, is Charleston the capital of West Virginia? I don't know that. Feels like it is. I don't know that though. Anyway, um, the we took a trip down there. They have an awesome board game store that my sister loves. And then they have um, a cross stitch shop. So the Village Sampler, which is super awesome. It's a fantastic place. So we um, went there. So I have a little haul that I have still forgotten to go get. You'd think as many times as I've restarted this video in one of those breaks, I would have gone and got the darn thing I have to no, I will go get it. I will get it. Uh, so then we, um, but they also have like a historic downtown type area or uptown type area that we just walked around and had a really nice time in. So it was just a good day. And then I started, came back and was going to record this and then my recording failed. So here I am trying again, doing my best. As flawed as it may be. <laughs> um, so that's it. That's everything. That's my life update. A lot going on this time. Like, usually I'm like, oh, nothing happened. But we had a lot this time, so it was good. Uh, I have, let's talk about cross stitch. Let's talk about the thing we're actually all here for, right? Uh, I have a finish. Three whips. New start. One new start. And theories and then haul because I went to this village sampler so I have haul so uh yeah excellent so that is what we're gonna get into so first up finishes let's do finishes first first up a fully finished ba -ba -bum. Ba -ba -bum -bum. this is a stitcher Hans here by the witchy stitcher uh, I have it all completed I stitched this on 14 count oatmeal Ada, I think, with the called for DMC flosses. Uh, actually, I did make a few color conversions because I just couldn't see some things. Like, I just needed more contrast. I have minor color blindness. Like, I think I'm like blue yellow color blind, um, but just a little bit. Like, it's, it just makes everything difficult. It just makes life just harder than it needs to be. So I had to like change um, a few little things like the tiles. Uh, I couldn't see the difference between the two browns. So I just upped the contrast slightly. Um, nothing crazy. Uh, but I love how it finished out. Look at those little coffins. Let me hide 
cute little autofocus. Look at those little coffins with the little needles and then little scissors down the side. I just really love this. I finished it in a frame that I had in my frame collection, my gigantic frame collection, which I definitely need to show off one time. It's it's not like it's just weirdly eclectic. It's not anything great, but I have a lot of them. Uh, this I think is is definitely a vintage frame from like the 70s. The gold in it, I think just makes it. It just feels like something that you pulled out of an old house. Like, I just love that. Um, and so I'll be putting this up on my wall, uh, in my bedroom. Super happy with that. Super pleased with that. Um, I now have a couple of, like, usually I decorate seasonally. I love putting things on my walls. Um, but this is going to be out, I think, pretty year-round. Like, this is going to be in my bedroom year-round. And I have a couple things like that now. Which is quite nice. So, ba -ba -ba -bum. so that's my finish. Really pleased with that. Um, whips. Alright, let me pull, pull the papers up here. This is one of the things I've started doing is trying to have these papers. Uh, so... This is another witchy stitcher. This is the cryptid stitch along. This has been my um, road trip to a finish piece. So um, the Facebook group, and I'll link it below, um, the Ho Halloween Cross Stitch Challenge group. Um, I think that's the name. I always get it wrong. I think I look at it every day. Um, is hosting a competition uh, called Road Trip to a Finish. Uh, whereas they give you a stitch count each week to complete and you don't really have to complete it but it's like the goal to keep in mind and you post a starting photo and an ending photo and each week they are doing a giveaway and the idea is that over the month of June you hopefully end up finishing some projects that you were either kind of letting languish or like really need that last push and so I am doing the cryptid sal and I am doing good let me show you So, I'm over here singing to myself very quietly. I don't know if you can hear that. Um, so, since we last saw each other, I have... Hang on. How did I do this last time? I did it one time and it worked really well. There we go. I have finished up Nessie. I think I might have Ness had Nessie finished last time. Um, I finished up the Dover Demons. So, they are completely done except for backstitching. I find backstitching a little hard to do in this frame. So I, I take it out periodically anyway. So I just, when I take it out, I do the back stitching. Um, did all this little fill in, little fill in right there. And then had a panic moment when I put this little skull in, realizing that the Jersey Devil is one stitch too high. And I was like, oh fuck, have I displaced all the way down? And now my edge isn't going to match up. Like, did I use the Jersey Devil as the measurement and it's been wrong this whole time? And so I had a major freak out about whether Kraken needed adjusting and blah, blah, blah. It did not. Jersey Devil, I just added one stitch in when I was going up from the bottom. And so everything else has been based on uh, the Enfield Horror over here. So it didn't, it didn't bother it at all. So he's just a little, he's just a little stupid uh, and scary. So got all that done, started on the Kraken and, and have continued to work on the border over here. Um, and so I feel like I am really doing good. I think I only need 600 more stitches for this week. Um, and I'll totally bang that out. I'm like super confident in that. It has been really good to focus on this. I like having goals like this. I am a person that really likes the rigidity of a goal set. Like, don't ask me why. It just, it motivates me. It works for me. So things like this, I'm like, and then there's the like, the also like, you submit your thing, you have the chance of winning something. Like something, I mean, it's perfect. Little motivator. I also have to show you my kick-ass needle minder. Since I'm working on the Kraken, seems very appropriate. Uh, this was a... Uh, enamel pin that my aunt got me. Uh, she was, she vacations a lot because she's retired. That bitch. So she just saw enamel pins. And my sister has like a, 
a really small collection of enamel pins. Like she just picked up a few and like semi likes enamel pins. And because of that, our whole family thinks, well, they both love enamel pins, or at least this one hand does. And so she got it for me and I'm like, it's beautiful. I love it. I don't really wear or have a place to display or keep these enamel pins. So it went in a drawer with another one. And until recently I saw somebody say, or I got one, somebody got me a needle minder as a gift and I could tell that it was just an enamel pin with the back snipped off. Like whoever was selling these was just using enamel pins and snipping the back off. And I was like, wait, you can do that? Guess who's doing that now? Uh, yeah, so I just took a um, set of really heavy duty wire snips, snipped the back off, and you have to sand with a rasp to make sure there's no um, little edges that'll catch your fabric as you like slide it around. So you sand with a rasp. And then I just use a little bit of like, um, I think it's E6000 glue because it, it'll work on metal really well. Put a magnet on the back of the pin and then use another magnet and it's perfect. And it holds the needle really tightly. Um, you can just do, because a lot of, um, a lot of the enamel pins are magnetic anyway. So you can just do the one, the one magnet and then the pin on the other side. But I find that doesn't hold the needle very well. Like you need the extra magnet. So just a little, here, I'll show you. Like my little, it's not even a tutorial because it's, there's literally no steps. But there you can see where I like sanded down the little pins. See if I can get the darn thing to focus. So you can see I, I sanded these little nubs down and they are completely rounded. They will not catch. E6000 a, a thing on, a magnet on. Put another magnet, perfect. And it holds really well. So I've done that with two pins now. Like I said, I don't have a ton. But now when I see a pin out and about, and normally I would have been like, well, I have no use for pins. These are great little things to remember this festival I, but why would I pick up a pin? Now I know. So. Super great, super happy with my progress here. I'm about, I'm almost 80% done. This has been, when did I start this? Hang on, let me get my book out. My book of knowing of everything. My book. I love my stickers, by the way. Oh, I collect them and I, whenever we go somewhere, I look for them. Um, all right, so I started, the, ooh, I started this on August 1st. I thought it was July 1st. But it's August 1st, 2021. I My goal was to have it done for Halloween of this year. And with this focus on finish, that's obviously very doable. It might be doable to have it done before August 1st. That would be awesome. That is the new goal. Yes. So that's cool. Yeah. So that's the goal. I'm going to work towards it. I'm making good progress. I love it. I love my fat. I'm stitching this on 28 count Wakelt linen. I can't remember the name of the color. I'll put it in the description. Um, and I really like it, except it is a, just a little transparent for the amount of like, like I'm doing single stitches sometimes, single stitches, tying it off and cutting it. Like I'm doing things that small because I can't really pull very far because the, the fabric is kind of transparent. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're looking at that. Um, whip number two. We'll keep in the spooky theme. Do, 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 do. This is, I'll put up my little thing. This is Candyman, also by the Witchy Stitcher. Can you tell she's like my favorite designer? I posted a bunch of her stuff on Instagram lately and she commented and was like, these are so beautiful. And I was like, oh, don't worry. I'm working my way through your whole catalog. <laughs> it's great. But I started this um, for Halomania and have made some progress. Um, this is taking in my rotation kind of sort of um, where a, a Stitcher Hans here was. So I'm making progress. Hold this up here. Do, 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 do. I really like that fade. Like that is so pretty and trying to get the fold out. 
um, the fade is really good. Like her color choices are always amazing. I'm really liking this because it is um, a bright red on this black versus, um, you know, more neutral tones, which I've been doing a lot of. It really pops and makes you feel good. It also makes progress very quickly. Like I guess because it's letters, and maybe this is why people love sample, like alphabet samplers so much. You just feel like you're accomplishing something as you, you know, complete a small piece. Um, I think the last time I was like here, I was working on this and I had like Andy done and that was it. So I've really put some mileage on this one. And yeah, it's coming along. It's going to be a gift for my sister. I am really loving how she framed it in gold. I think that really picks up the the gold in the piece. So I might do something like that, but I think my sister's more of a, a generic frame person versus a big filigreed gold thing. Uh, I'm stitching this on 28 count uh, black Jobelin. And I like this fabric. I have a lot of this black in my stash because I bought it for a project, realized the 28 count was gonna be way too big. That is one thing I am still like learning and getting um, comfortable with is going, like 28 count is my jam, it's my comfort place, but I need to start looking at what is the finished size of this piece going to be and are you comfortable with that size or should it be smaller and should you look at an 18 count, a 36 count, you know, I'm bad at that. I don't consider that that often, so I end up with big pieces. But that's okay, because I like them big. So that's coming along. I'm really happy with that one. All right. Third and final whip that I've been working on is, this one is Schoolhouse Sampler by Stony Creek. I found this in a thrift store. Uh, it's actually our Habitat for Humanity store. I remembered the other day where I got it. Um, it was in a little thing. They have like a, it's literally like a basket with a bunch of papers just shoved in it. And this was in there. So really pleased with that. Um, when I saw it, I snagged it. This is a gift stitch for my cousin who is, um, she was a third grade teacher. She's now a principal. She got her principalship this year. And so this is a gift for her. Um, I'm going to be doing a slight color conversion. I think I've talked about this just to get rid of some of the pastels. I feel like that really makes it more old fashioned, brighten those up. Um, and I'm not going to do anything crazy, but I've made some progress. Boop, 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 boop. So let's see here if I can figure out how to hold this and show it. Nope. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Now I can kind of talk about it. So the last time we were here, I had like this top of the roof done and then like one line of red stitching down the side. So you can see I've really made progress. I got all this red in, finished this little sign off. Um, there's back stitching that makes a little sign there. Um, got a lot of the red in. This will look more like, um, there's a ton of back stitching in this. So it will become more um, vivid against the background. Like this tree limb will get a lot of backstitching. You just define it against this neutral, um, neutral cloth. Um, I also stitched the bell. Let me see if I can see. Can you see how glittery that is? It's, oh, there we go. It's a little bit. I'm making the light do weird things. Um, this was my first stitching with blending filament to make things glittery. And it's a pain in the ass. It, it is rough. It is scratchy and catchy and not fun to work with. Um, and I definitely cut my first strands too long. So I was constantly dealing with that. I will definitely cut shorter in the, in the future. Like a normal length of thread is too long for, um, for blending filament, I feel. As a noob, as a person that has not done this before. Um, but it is a strand of thread and two strands of blending filament. And it will again get some backstitch to define it a little bit more. And I was like, oof, if there's a lot of this, I'm gonna be miserable. 
but there really isn't. The only place it is, is in the bells. So there are, autofocus, please. Nope, okay, good. Um, there are little bells here between all the books. And that's the only place it is. It's on the school bell and there's little bells there. So that's good. So it's not an unreasonable amount, totally doable. Um, so I'm really liking this. It's a bit of a pain in the butt. I did finally get um, it, it into Pattern Keeper. I did get the bottom half, the, the, the scenery of the school into Pattern Keeper, which is really great. But the, um, the way this is written is a little odd. I guess it's just like, you know, one, it's from a magazine. Two, it's um, a little old fashioned. There's just like, there's a lot of specialty stitches. So there's some tent stitching or specialty stitches. There's some tent stitching, there's some tweeting, there's the blending filament. Um, there's one other. And the instructions for those specialty stitches are all over the place. It's not like, here's your colors, here's the specialty here's the stitches. It's like, one of them, I think tent stitching, is actually over in like the descriptor of the fabric they stitched the sample on. It's like not in a place that would make sense. So I'm glad I'm checking everywhere. I guess that's why you should read your patterns, but who does that? So, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. It's a fun stitch. It feels like it's going really quickly, I guess just because of the red and it's you're, you're building that you know very clearly defined structure so it feels really nice um to stitch on so sorry uh so yeah good stuff making progress so those are my whips yeah those are my whips and new start new start so when I recorded Sunday, I didn't have this, but I'm, it's Wednesday now, so I have it. Uh, this one is Flower of the Month uh, by Ellen Maurer Stroh. I don't have a paper for this one, uh, so I'll insert a picture here. This is July. So I started on July. I now, I think I have every shade of blue that DMC makes. Not really. But close, I'm getting there. Uh, and this is my progress so far not an insignificant amount, I feel. So, got this one started. I'm stitching this one on 28 count, of course. Uh, and this is just white Monaco. Uh, I think I got this at Hobby Lobby back in the day when I shopped at Hobby Lobby. And this shit is thick. Thick. <laughs> it is like stitching on sailcloth. It is so tightly woven and um, thick fibers, like one of these fibers just kind of came out. You can see thick fibers. So it is sturdy. And part of me really likes that. Like it is satisfying to hear the like pop of your needle going through. And the like, but also like two strands almost feels too like too much for how thick that, how thickly woven this is. Um, but I am really loving it. I have done, uh, this was just a scrap I had. I have done all my months so far in the same color or in different colors. I think next month I'm probably gonna have a repeat. August, yeah. Um, but I'm really liking that. It's really cute, it's really coming along. So I got the whole inner border done and I started on this. This is a pain in the ass because it is speckle city it is not it's not confetti but it is spread out it's just little bits so it, it feels harder to make progress but i like it it's it's coming along this is february and then i skipped march april may june this is my fifth of the months that i've done and i'm really enjoying having these i like having them out on my desk i put them on my desk at work and I am, everybody comments on them. So it's just a little nice, uh, it's a little nice piece.
chances are you've seen them a hundred times. Uh, mounting that is going to be a little bit of a pain because the fabric is quite stiff and mounting it to foam board is going to just just be a little finicky I think. So not looking forward to that. Next I should go get my haul but first I'm going to talk about this and I might even open it. We might we might have some crinkles here. So I have wanted, let's talk about conversation. I've wanted to do a new start, but I have uh, an undiagnosed, like this is just me talking about my life. Um, I have, I love structure. I love structured ways of doing things. I'm an organizer. My work is a data analyst. I like and thrive in those environments. Like we were talking about like really defined goals. Love them. Super happy. So my normal rotation is four, uh, uh, is about four projects. And I can work on those projects consistently throughout the month, get finishes fairly regularly, depending on the size of the projects, obviously. Um, but like feel really good. Like I am having progress, but I just did Holomania where I started projects where I wouldn't have normally. And that was satisfying. Ooh, uh, and this, this community is terrible. Like I think my last episode, I even called it terrible enablers. So I've wanted to do a new start and I was like, fine, just do it. Just do it and, and get it over with and, and enjoy that part of the hobby. Um, and so I was talking to my previous co-host Devin and she was like, well, why don't you do a, a monthly rotation? So like this month you're working on these four projects and then next month you're working on these four projects you know, or, you know, two of your four move around or something like that. And I was like, ma'am, that is a possibility. I can get behind that. So then I was like, I know the project I want to start. I know which one it is. It's on Etsy. It's in my favorites. I want it. And it's gone. So Etsy has um, put a site-wide ban on Russian sellers. And this was a Russian artist which is, I think, um, I mean, there's, there's huge impacts to doing that in general, but cross stitch, Russian cross stitch designers are a thing, like they're a demographic, a huge demographic. Um, and you know, there's various opinions on, on Etsy's choice to do that. A lot of it was economic. Russia's banks are not stable right now. And so a lot of payers are not dealing with them. And if you can't get PayPal in like, how's Etsy supposed to do anything, right? Like totally makes sense. At the same time, these are people who are designing cross stitch. They're not, you know, it's not their fault that all this is happening. Um, and I've been unable to find this designer um, who is Anim cross stitch. I'll link her up. I can't link her. She didn't have, it's Anim, I'll put it in here, Anim Cross Stitch. Um, and she had awesome teapots for the Pagan Sabbath. They were, so each one would get a teapot with flowers and like a, a, like a centerpiece arrangement. They're so cute, so beautiful. They were definitely a series I wanted to do. I was like, I'll pick one for summer. Perfect. No, they're gone. Um, I did find a, um, a listing for kits on AliExpress. They're not that expensive. They're like $5 for each. Um, but that also doesn't bode well for, for a kit, like a whole kit, fabric, thread, everything, $5. Um, which I know AliExpress is like wish kind of. So it just, it just doesn't sit right with me. I'm not going to do that. But I'll link it below. If you're interested, I'll link it below. And then you can at least see the artwork that I'm talking about. The really cute teapots. Um, I'll just wait for, hopefully, her return. I can support her as an artist. I like her a lot. Um, and I'll do it that way. Life is hard. But after that, I was like, we'll tag on my teapots. And... Then I remembered I have this kit. This is a Riolis kit. It is called Tea Time. And I've had it for a while. Been meaning to start it. 
it is I was hoping for something a little more uh, not spooky but I love the the pagan element the the Sabbath the spiritual element of that I really liked that whereas this is just a beautiful teapot but it might satiate that itch so I think why don't we open it lots of crinkles lots of crinkles so I've never done a Riolas kit before. I actually got it because I watch Romantic Tangles here on YouTube. Liza Deceit, do I need scissors? Holy mo, no, we don't want scissors. We're, we're doing it. Um, hang on. Just deal with the crinkles. We made it. Go away, you awful thing. All right. Um, so I watch Rom Romantic Tangles here on YouTube. She's a floss tuber and generally um, thrifter person. I really love her. She's adorable. And she did a Riola Sal, where you just pick a Riola kit and start it with them. And I was like, I'm gonna do it. And then I picked it and I got it and it sat in a cupboard because sometimes that happens. Uh, so, I've never done one of these and they're a little different. So they use their own wool threads. So I don't know if you can see that because my autofocus is not focusing, uh, but they are soft and um, a little textured and definitely fuzzier than DMC. They're really beautiful colors. Look at that, that seafoam green, that is my color. Um, and so they come with all the color, all labeled. Look how beautiful. Oh my gosh. So they come with all that. And then they also come with two different sizes of fabric. That can't be right. So it came with 14 count. There's the needle, that's why. There's the needle in the kit. 14 count, like, um, uh, I think they call it natural or jute Ada. A little stiff. And then I don't know what this is for, but it is the tiniest piece of 18 count. And that has me wondering. Oh, this might be for the labels. So, hang on, let me rotate, move and eight. Oh, yep, it totally is. So the, the little labels down here are separately stitched and then stitched on. That is cute. That's an, a, a level of dimensionality I didn't realize. So that is cute. Uh, and then a full color, actually really nice um, chart. I'm going to open it and not show you anything oh everything's Russian oh no it's in English it's in English uh, here I'll just show you this little edge where they show you how to put the little drawer pulls on I'll show you how to put a little drawer pull on how cute is that uh, so yeah this is super cute I am super excited um, gonna be a fun project to start I'll have to see if I can get this sucker to scan into pattern keeper because I hate he, he, and I think that's probably one of the things that has um, delayed me starting this is I hate a paper pattern. I just, it's just, I just, I track things so much better. It makes my little data heart feel better to have the little percentage count. It's just better in pattern. Also like marking off is just so much better. Um, the people that invented Pattern Keeper, like I have now because of Futzing around with a terrible ancient tablet. Uh, I have bought it three times. Uh, and they deserve all of that money. And they, they are amazing. So, uh, so yeah. So that is going to be my next start. I'm going to be starting that sometime this week. And I'm super excited about that. So, uh, so that is everything. Let's do some haul. I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to be right back. Okay. I'm back. With more crinkly stuff. Great. Um, so, 
like I said, we went to Charleston, West Virginia, went to the Village Sampler, and also went um, to the downtown area. So I have some haul, and uh, but the first thing we show you, yeah, oh, oh, the crinkles is some stickers because they're fun. So I showed you my Clatter Cafe sticker. Um, this one is, let me see if I can show, oh yeah, there you go. Now you can really see that rainbow. This one is an awesome sticker that my friend Ruth gave me. Um, she, um, when we were having our Stitch and Bitch, uh, Cumberland, Maryland was also having their start of pride. And so lots of vendors, lots of stuff going on, lots of dancing, lots of music. It was really nice. Um, and her company, Grow West, which is a, um, marijuana producer and dispensary, uh, were selling stickers and other merch and also giving stuff out and just hanging out with people. And so she grabbed a sticker pack, and brought them to us all, and gave us them. And look at this one. Look how beautiful it is. I love that it's the mountains. I love that it's the rainbow. I just love it. Um, so she's a good person. Giving me stickers. Uh, the next one that I got was at um, in historic downtown St. Albans is a spiritual shop whose name I can't remember now. Anyway, and they had incense and crystals and tarot cards and it was just super awesome. They also had their own tea blends, which were very good. Um, somebody in-house blends their tea. And, but they also had stickers. And so I made Sarah buy some stuff. She was gonna buy stuff anyway. Um, I made Sarah buy some stuff. She, she likes incense and stuff like that. Uh, so that I could get a sticker. And I got this awesome skull sticker. Look how great that is. Uh, and it says, uh, born again assholes, if you think I give a fuck, you're strongly mistaken. And I love it. I was gonna put it on my work binder. I didn't think that was appropriate. So it goes, I, I hate that it's on the inside, but like, as you can see, I'm covering every inch, so. So this was a, this folder was given to me out of a supply closet at work and it was like a Comcast. It has like Comcast under all this. So I started putting stickers on it just to cover up the fact that it had like corporate logos all over it. Much better, much better. Um, at the coffee house down there, we picked up a couple stickers that I'm take I am taking to work. These are for friends of mine at work. These are by the hippie's daughter. This one says, come hell or high water. And this is for my um, work um, partner, like partner in crime at work. We're gonna get things done. We're, we're making changes. Uh, and then this is for uh, another friend of mine and says, having one way conversations with the darkness in my mind. And I know she will get a hoot out of that. She will 100% get um, because we also, we, we talk about, um, struggles with anxiety and depression and like how everything can be okay. And you're still doing this shit because why not overanalyze that? So she, she will totally be on board with that. So sticker collection increasing every day. Very important. Uh, but also stitchy haul. So let's talk about that. So we went to the village sampler, picked up a pack of needles, just plain old needles. Um, and fabric. Uh, when I was cro when I was crocheting a lot, um, there are several knitters in my circle of friends, um, Devin in particular, but other people as well, who had a yarn stash. And I really didn't get it. Like I understood it. Like mentally I understood, oh, you buy stuff when you see it because it might, you might not ever see it again. You, you know, have stuff there. If you want to start a project, you have something to go to. Totally. But I didn't understand the emotional need to have a stash. I just bought what I needed at the time. I was always too afraid of 
well, what if you can only get a skein or two and you definitely need more than that for whatever your project you're doing? Now you got to match or you got to find compliments to go with it or, you know, it just made more sense to me to buy what you wanted at the time you wanted it. Um, and yeah, you might miss out on, you know, unless it was like some exclusive that you, you knew you were going to love, like just buying stuff to have a stash. I know nobody was actually doing that, but like going to a festival and being like, okay, I have, you know, $300 to spend and I have no goal for those, that $300. Like that $300 is not a sweater's worth. That $300 is just to get a couple things I really like and, you know, enjoy the process of buying and binding and curating a stash. Didn't really get it. I have a fabric stash. I totally get it. Like I totally get it. Um, it really has changed the way I look at stuff. And so, um, so this is all just, it was, it was vacation. It was mini vacation. It was just special stuff for me to have. Um, so we walked in and we went over to the fabric area and I was just kind of looking around and, um, oh, not Pat. I can't remember the other lady's name that works there. She's like, what kind of fabric do you usually like? And then she just started getting stuff out and handing it to me like the terrible enabler she is. So, I got lots of stuff. So, the other thing I love is that they give you these little tags that tell you what's on them and how much and the size and everything. So, this first one is Picture This Plus Lupine. This is 28 Count Lugana, which is one of my favorites. And... I got, I think, a fat eighth of this. Um, it is so pretty. It's so rusty, and um, it's coming up a little more washed out in the light here. It is it is a nice, rusty red. Lupine doesn't make a ton of sense to me as the name. Um, but as we were talking, and she was getting stuff out, she was like, so what, like... Um, what's your color palette you're kind of looking for? Do you have like an aesthetic you're going for? And I was like, swampy. She knew what I, she knew what I meant, but I was like, that's my aesthetic, swampy. So got this beautiful piece. Um, this one is, I think also picture this plus. Um, no, it is not, but I don't know the dire but it is lazy river and oh look at that oh that's so pretty that's so pretty this was um like obviously they had taken a piece out of the you know they cut something out of the yard of fabric or whatever and i just had her cut the the wing off and and that's what i so it's a good size it's like uh 13 by 16, so not quite a fat eighth, but pretty decent. So, pleased with that. Th look at those. Those Miss Swampies. Happy with those. No ideas for these. Like I said, these are all stash. Um, st keeping in 28 count, these were scraps from their remnants bin, which I love. This is 28 count Desert Storm. It's more neutral but still got a lot of um, good blotches in there. The um, camera's not picking up, but there's a little more of like a, a blue purple to it than just straight brown. Um, it's really pretty. I really like it. So, so if you hold these up, swampy, perfect. Uh, and then this other scrap I just grabbed, this is, this is Picture This Plus, I know this one is. Uh, and this one is also 28 count in Zephyr. And it's very sky, like really happy with that. This one is, she didn't put the measurements on it, um, but it's just a remnant scrap. So really pleased with that. And yeah, so that's the 28 count I picked up. I, uh really enjoy going over there. We looked through all the over dyes and um, picked a couple. And then I was like, you know what? I always go for 28 count. It's my favorite. I need some smaller counts. I need some, um, or I need some smaller 
stitches. I need some 18 count or some 32 or 36. And so she pulled out the 18 and she's like, well, we don't have a ton of like over dies or anything interesting in 18. And then pulled out this. This is Moon Glow. Uh, no, uh, no dyer listed. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty interesting. I think that's pretty cool. I think that's beautiful. So I grabbed a fat eighth of this as well, which will go much farther in 18 count. So please with that. Uh, I, I just imagine black on this, like black on this with maybe some glow in the dark beads or thread, like gorgeous. Can't get over that. So I grabbed this one. And then we looked at this one and I just fell in love. This is a stamped Ada, stamped 18 count which I think is such a fascinating way to do things. Like you get this whole really cool thing that you can just reproduce. Um, it's way less um, of an intensive process and you get this beautiful result. This is, she had no naming, no nothing on this. Uh, and so we decided it is now called Birch because of the patterning looks like birch bark so I am super happy with that and so that is all stash that is all new stuff I am excited to find projects for them I will um you know I think it's all stuff it's none of it is stuff I'm gonna be like I'm never gonna use that you know I will totally be picking this up regularly um there was one, she was trying to sell me on um, like acid green. She's like, if you stitch a lot of Halloween, you need this like monster mash. And I was like, I will never pick that up. Like, I love it. It's so cool. Like having those neons would 100% like in the moment make me really happy. And then I would pass them over every time. Like I just, like unless I was stitching Beetlejuice or something like that, which is a possibility. But I was like, it, it just won't happen. Like, I will always choose something a little more subtle, I think. Um, so I tried to be reasonable. Then as we were checking out, um, and I said, I need a pack of needles. Like, let me just grab a pack. She's like, have you ever tried ball-pointed needles? I was like, no, I don't even know what that is. Because I don't have any locals, people stitching and telling me these secrets. And she's like, you got to try them. They have a little ball on the end so that when you're going back up through a hole, they're not splitting your threads and things like that or splitting the fabric. And I was like, oh, I can really see the benefit of that. Like when you, if you have to frog something, you're not ripping back through, you know, like we've all gone through a thread and it's just been nightmare. And she's like, they're, they're amazing. You got to try them. And I was like, eh, I'll just get the needles I'm thinking of, but I, I will try them in the future. And she's like, here, and she gave me some to just try. And she's like, you tell me how you like them next time I see you. And I was like, this is the nicest store in the whole world. It's a great store. Go say hi to Pat and I have a wonderful time. So that is my stitchy haul. It's all fat. I didn't buy any patterns because I literally had a calculator up of how much we could spend on vacation. I was subtracting off every one of those as my like souvenir quote unquote for vacation. And I had nothing left for, uh, for patterns. Um, oh, I did get a Mill Hill kit that I forgot. So I did get a little hill kit. I'll show that next time. Um, yeah. So that is everything. That is all my haul, all my chatting, all my nonsense, all my whips. We did it. Fifth or sixth time's the charm, right? Um, that is everything. So with all the anxiety I've had about new starts, I want people to tell me about your... Um, view or technique or like style of new starts are you a person that's just like whenever I feel like a new start I start and I have 700 whips and it doesn't bother me like or are you a person that kind of like plans out the you know new starts semi-regularly are you a monogamous stitcher are you like me and it's just like uh, I gotta really think about it and have a have a moment to, to come to a new start like tell me your techniques uh, or philosophy on new starts um, yeah, so talk, talk to me about that because it's been like bugging me recently.
Other than that, I will see you all in two weeks. We'll be back at this again with more fun stuff going on and things to see and do and chat about and wonderful projects. So I'll see you guys in two weeks.